The Bantral system is not at war. Bantral was never, until recently, a wealthy colony. The planet had resources enough just to maintain its own small society, but none worth exporting. There was never any need for the corporate sponsors of its initial colonization to interfere with its administration. In the halls of Solar Union Commerce, land shares on Bantrell were traded for nothing. No cost, no gain. You might throw all of my land shares on Bantrell into your golf wager as a joke or give them as a prank gift to a friend. Recently, though, there was a minor development in an obscure biochemical processing technology, and the novel features of Bantrol's ecosystem went from being a scientific curiosity to being an untapped and unknowably deep wellspring of wealth. Land shares on Bantrol are no longer an ignored asterisk on anyone's balance sheet. The handover of administration and power from the descendants of Bantral's original Terran colonists to the newly interested legal right holders, the self-proclaimed landowners, has been cheerful, orderly, and mutually profitable. There have been a few isolated spats, of course, but there have been practically no protracted, bitter, bloody war of resistance between the displaced Bantrest aristocracy and the off-world landowners. And when landowners use the threat of violence to force hereditary great families to give up their land, keeping them on as guides and entertainers, it's cheerful. And when they offer them in exchange a negligible sum, it's mutually profitable. And when a fiery company of Bantress irregulars responds by raiding their holdings and seizing arms and materials against future battles, and local insurrections take advantage of the upset by forcibly occupying biochemical processing facilities, and the landowners respond with a ruthless crackdown in martial law, these are a few isolated spats. Now, to admit otherwise would be to invite the intervention of the Terran Transit Authority's mediation and peacekeeping forces. And then no one would get rich from Brandtrol, but the TTA. We look up at the... Uh, and we can see this massive underwater city inside like a slightly flickering opalescent dome. On the surface above, there's light filtering down, and you can see this, this swirling uh, disk that's a warp gate to anywhere, but the camera focuses on the city. It moves inwards from the uh, opulent oceanside homes of the rich through the industrial zones and finally into the center of the city where even the light from the sun is blacked out. And it's just this dead gray light from dirty, dirty light caps over the streets. We go past a, a building whose Windows really don't show anything. Like if, if you were in, in one of these rooms, all you would see is the other side of a street that's kind of littered with garbage, not piles of garbage, but just you know garbage here and there. Like nobody cares to keep it spotless. But the windows are really just there so that the, uh, the landowners can walk around in the street and look in people's windows and see what their tenants are up to. But fortunately, there's enough still legal protections for the poor that they're allowed to block up the windows. So we see a lot of windows are covered with cardboard and <clears throat> the camera zooms into one of the cracks behind the between the cardboard and the window. So and we're in a, in a small room. We see a, a flower in like a brand new plastic cup. It's like it was bought for 50 cents at the local space Walmart. Um, not even the Walmart, but like the space Walgreens. Um, 
the the cardboard blockers to block out the windows are painted with stars. Um, you, you see like random things strewn across the room and kind of smells like, like garbage in here. Um, and there is a young girl sitting in front of a mirror and looks like she's putting on makeup for the first time, trying it out. And she's not really doing it very well. It's a little bit too thick. But she's, you know, experimenting. And there's a knock at the door. She puts down the makeup, you know, stumbles away from the mirror, wipes off her face with a towel. And because this is kind of anime, you know, it comes out like perfectly subtle. And Bring goes to the door and opens it. Um, can't really hear the conversation. But eventually, Bryn holds up the uh, the key card with the uh, supervisor's face on it. And the supervisor says, no, you need to keep that. I'm going to need you to I need you to work the uh, the trash compactor a few more days, Bryn. Like we just got to keep you out of the out of the sight of the nobility for a while. But we we need you on the on the food court shift today. Um you think you can do it? And Brid nods and tucks the key card back into a pocket. He says, all right. Come on up when you can. And so he leaves and we cut to the food court, um, which you know usually is pretty silent. People are just getting their food moving along. But today everyone seems to be a little bit nicer complimenting Bryn on her makeup and you know saying nice things and her other co-workers are you know also helping out a little bit more so just letting her uh, stumble about and figuring out things herself and eventually you know Bryn's like emotionless repetitive work she starts to smile and blush a little bit and that's where it ends Yeah, sorry about that. I had forgot to unmute myself. Boy, I am great at this. Thank you, Sun Spirit. Oh, no. All right, starting over. Start over, start over. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> we cut over to a huge building that is in the better part of Skyfus, in the industrial section. It's like a skyscraper that goes up in this underwater city to just almost, but not quite, 
breached the circus surface of the water and you see the peak zenith logo on it and as we zoom in to one of the windows we find silver in her office leaned over her desk her glasses on her nose as she's reading over these personnel files and she's got a list and she's checking boxes and finally she just kind of throws down all of these dossiers onto the table and the camera zooms across them and we see a bunch of faces in little um, portraits attached to each of these resumes and then we have a, a short uh, sequence of each of these people um, landing in the space dock and getting into cabs and coming and meeting her at the Peak Zenith building. And there's a short um, sequence of her going over the specs of all of their mechs as these are her new crew that uh, is, is going to be assisting her here in maintaining peace on Bantral in the name of Peak Zenith. And we watch each of them uh, examine their mech, open up the cockpit, slip inside, look at all of the buttons and uh, flip things on, and then immediately the mechs stumble and fall, and there's just a huge mess. And Silver just shakes her head and that's that scene. We go from disorder to order, and we go through the gates, the archways of the Marinasa Congregation of the Deep. And it's this whole church like place with like plasma bulletin boards advertising. Sash Mary Naza as a guest speaker, speaking on the limbs of the deep. And then we cut inside to this theus with two big, comfy, luxurious chairs on it with floral print. Um, and like a table between the two. And Sash is taking up space in front of um the furniture and orating to the crowd we are all the limbs of the deep and this is what connects us our job in life is to gain deep consciousness so that we can further actualize our lives to demonstrate i'm going to bring up my little brother, Amphi, and we're going to do an exercise together. And after that, I'm going to call anyone who's interested up here to do this exercise. We'll run for about two hours and then we're gonna head home. So Amphi, do you wanna come up here? Hi. We're going to uh, do the exercise just like we talked about off stage. So, little background, Amphi and I have been, uh, our family's pretty wild, and we've been, we've spent a lot of time in a bedroom together talking about how crazy our family is, and we're, we're talking about what we want to do with them and what we think of each individual person and what direction we want our family to go in to accept us or not. Um, Amphi, we're, our family is 
one of those families where everyone's trying to be friendly, but you meet them year after year and you don't see anything new happen. You see the same old little branches of the family, the same cousins each time. And we're, Sash and I disagree a lot on a lot of things. We have a lot of sibling rivalry. We fight a lot. But one thing we agree on is we want to change our family for the better. But that's a lot of people and a lot of acceptance that everyone has to get a hold of. Um, and I think Sash is going too quickly with things, but at the same time, to practice deep consciousness together, I have to recognize that that is also what I appreciate about Sash. And then there's this exercise that happens between Amphi and Sash where they like make like pretty intense eye contact and they start saying things that they like appreciate about one another and things that they don't like about each other. So you can see like this sibling dynamic, just like pretty classic, where there's like, I absolutely hate that you do this. I envy this about you. It's not even really appreciation. It's more like mutual envy. And then we cut away from that in sort of like a dissolve. We hear the sound of impact wrenches before we see the workshop. It's set in a large warehouse, repurposed from whatever it was used before. And we see a lineup of working mechs that are being worked on by a ragtag band of men and women. They wear different uniforms. They don't seem to have any cohesion except for the camaraderie between them. And we see a familiar face working on one of these repurposed mechs. Um, Grease in his nails, his hair, his uh, long purple hair bits tied back to keep it out of the way. And he calls over his shoulder and say, all right, let's get those laser wrenches and install the, uh, the cannons. And he hears a voice over his shoulder say, um, where are the cannons? He looks around. They should have been delivered. One second, he gets a rag, cleans off his hands, get on, gets on his comm. We hear him shouting to someone, someone we can't hear the other side of the conversation. We just get a one-way conversation. No, they should have been delivered yesterday. Well, then look into it. What? What do you mean my accounts are frozen and hard cut? Dun, dun, dun. Wild. All right. I think it's my turn to uh, start a game, right? Yep. yep. So I'm not sure who I'm going to have this with. So let me ask uh, Astani. Um, yeah. You're playing a rebel, right? But are they a terrorist? Um, not yet. So they're not involved with any like attacks on the civilian infrastructure. Uh, I don't think that they would because they're they're more against like they would do terrorist stuff, but against like landowner structures. And if they see any resurgence of nobility trying to do stuff that they should not be doing, they are up on that too. But okay. as far as like the actual, like they don't want to make life harder for the citizens of Bantresh because they're fighting for the citizens of Bantresh. They want to make okay. life better for them. 
So there's the idea. That didn't work out. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Adam, Sasha's like a musician, right? What kind of scene do they play at? Um, so I think technically what I was thinking before is that Sash MCs, but I think they are also a DJ because I think that's maybe the scene where they like learned to like I think that's the like maybe the place where they got like their um stage vibe presence mm. where like they take up a lot of space because like your arms have to be on dials and switches and stuff. So we tell I'm not a huge nerd who doesn't know anything about music. Yeah. And what's the difference between a DJ and an MC? An MC is more in the front trying to hype up the crowd and a DJ is actually like um, managing all the sound engineering okay. more back behind like a divider and whatever. Do you think you ever have a crowd of Beatles like fangirls chasing you after a show? Oh yeah. Let's do that then. Mm -hmm. And also some some DJs will MC for themselves and like do the hard work of hyping up the crowd and like managing sound stuff all at the same time and that's a little wild. That's cool. I'm glad yeah. you uh, explained it to me. Yeah. All right. So I feel like you're the quarry here. Amazing. Yeah. You're being chased by a mob of, of I guess, boys and girls. <gasps> and you have, like, if I catch you, you're going to have to, like, get kissed and sign things and, you know, all those other things you just don't want to do right now because you're tired after a show. I don't know. What's your motivation? Do you even want to get away? I absolutely do because I'm even afraid of my own phone at the moment. I'm All right. Conclusion from folks. All right. Well, you're the query. Where mm -hmm. are you going? What? What? Where, where is safety for you? Oh, I mean, like it's got to be like an underwater limousine, right? All right. There's a limo, or, with, like bouncers surrounding it. Yeah. Some kind of security? Yes. Um, yeah, I see it. All right. Well, you're the quarry. I mean, we're not in our mobile, mobile frames. It's making no sense. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, you're the quarry. You choose what the challenges are. What do I have to do to get an autograph? OK. This is my first time playing a chase and my favorite, one of my favorite implementations of a chase. Um, oh gosh, this is my first time looking at these questions. So I'm, I'm going to say I lead a dizzying course through Switchback and Blind. Follow me if you want, but throw. On Tails, you're lost and won't be able to find your own way back. So I think we're like moving through like, um, red rope kind of areas and then like down through hallways and stuff but then i just i don't actually go down one of the hallways yeah i think the fans are like just pushing through all the uh, the ropes and um you know some of them are like ducking under i think Bryn's like ducking under one of the ropes and she's pretty fast actually She's like able to keep it in front of the, of the crowd and not get trampled. But I don't know how much stamina you have growing up in space. I'm going to throw. Uh, if I can remember how to throw. I think this right is how I throw. Oh, that works. Yep. That's a fail, right? Okay. Yep. So Fails. I'm Unfails. getting lost. Yep, you're lost and you won't be able to find your own way back. Yeah, so I'm in this dark hallway and I, there's, a, there's a strobing exit sign and a fly of stairs and the crowd is behind me. I, I climb up the stairs 
and look out windows to see what what's going on what's your i think or is that the uh or am i lost no i think the chase is still going on right yeah yeah you just okay. you just won't be able to find your way back but you're still okay chasing mm -hmm. all right cool i okay Still getting a hang of this game real quick. Cool. Uh, so I have to lead you through more challenges. And Challenge. one of them has to be an admission. Okay. And the third one has to be. The unless other you ones don't have to be. You do the game. Like you can pick an admission whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Um the third one has to be unless you pick the one and win that says I need not choose any admissions during the chase. So you can do that. Cool. Um, I think I've kind of lost you at this point. So I'm going to I'm gonna do an admission to give you some ground. Uh let's take a look. Oh yeah, since I'm like still actually in the hallway, I now there are people in the hallway that just like are in like you're all in the hallway blocking me from getting out of like this janitor's closet that I'm stuck in and I groan to myself about the meme that I've trapped myself into um so I've led myself into a dead end and have to dash past you to win free throw on heads you head me off and so gain two coins Cool. All right. Oh, I fail again. I sure hope I'm doing this right. Are Let me just try a few times. Are you choosing a random side? Oh, it, it is working right. Yeah, okay. it works. Yeah. You just failed. <laughs> I just like, curse you, roll 20. I fail, and uh, I guess Sash just runs right pa past Bryn on mm -hmm. the stairway. And she's like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. And then she starts chasing you again. There's a um there's Sash. A cutaway shot. Sash. There's a cutaway shot back to the janitor's closet where Sash left their mask behind and plugged into like um the intercom. So it made it sound like cause the quality on the speakerphones on their mask are really clear. So, like, the audio is the same. So when it comes out of the speaker, it sounds like it's actually them speaking from, like, another room. So then nice. Sash has their mask off now and is not easily recognizable. And there's sound coming from another direction. So, um, um, but, like, now we're on the third one, so I have to make another admission. So I think, like... I still look back at you and you're nearer than I thought. Throw on heads, you put on a burst of speed and so gain two coins. So I'm like, there's a, the recognition and I might get trampled. Yeah. Nope. I wrote 20 wants you to escape. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm chasing you and I'm not catching up. Um, and Worse, the, the crowd of fans is now swarming up the stairs on either side. They're starting <laughs> to get between you and me. Uh, you follow me up some stairs, and we get all the way through the top, and I think a lot of people are making the assumption that I'm going to go to the rooftop, and then um, the limousine will either be like parked in the water on the roof, or I'm like just going to like because i don't quite have like i don't have my mask anymore so i can't just um swim away so there must be like a limousine parked on the roof or something but um once we get to the top you uh, I think, the limousine. yeah i think there's like people coming in from the top too because they heard that I was here, they parked, and then they started coming down the stairwell. So, like, I look, I'm on the railing, I look down this, like, multi-story 
drop. And um, not that one. Where's the one where you where you jump over a high? Uh, the one right above admissions. I leap out over nothing. There we go. Because I was, I kept looking at. I race along a high and perilous edge, and I was like, "That's not what I'm doing. I'm leaping off." I leap out over nothing and make a hard, precarious landing. Follow me if you dare, but throw. On heads, you gain one coin. On tails, though, you barely catch yourself. You're clinging on with all your strength, and the chase ends now with, with you at my mercy. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm going to throw that shit. Oh, I succeed. Yes! You do it. All right. So Sash uh, marvelously defends off the, the, the gate and the down like several stories yeah like you're you're descending um and i think bryn is like sliding down like a pipe or something um it's probably like one of the support beams of the bridge that goes to the roof of the building because that's how you drive away from the roof of the building, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so she's like sliding down a support beam and I think you get into the car and then she's in front of the car. And let's see here. So we have the same amount of coins, I think. Is that right? No, you have more. They didn't get any. You only got no, one, like, but that's yeah, more. I I failed, so shouldn't they have? Yeah. No, because oh, no, all of the doing? all the things were like you getting lost or you not okay. being. Able, and there were like two admissions that they can't get coins from. So yeah, okay. You win. I win. All right. Yes. But you choose, Adam. Cool. Oh yeah, this makes sense. I'm exhausted and you overtake me. All right. So I guess you don't quite make it to your car. Yeah. Um, you're almost there. And Brenna's like runs up to you and she's like looks at you and you're not moving and she looks behind her and the crowd's still like not here yet. They're like going down like the fire escapes and everything. Mm -hmm. But nobody's quite that crazy to uh, slide down like she was. Yeah. Um, so like, you just see like people waving and cheering it on. And uh, Bryn's like, oh, well, I didn't expect. Like, she didn't say anything like this, but she, like, she didn't expect to actually be the one that catches you. Yeah. Uh, I so remember she's you. Just, like, no, no, you don't. Um, Sign, get me out of here. This. What? Yeah, sure. Just get me out of here. And then I'll, I like take whatever you want me to sign. I've got a pen and. What's wrong? This crowd's very. Uh, to talk about bad fandoms. <laughs> Let me pray. <laughs> She looked back and like some of them have knives or something. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Here's the thing: I don't think they do. I think they're just like very mobby and swarmy. All right, so I think Prin um, basically just like puts her shoulder under yours, and surprisingly, pretty strong. When she straightens up, as able to like kind of carry you to your car. Oh my gosh. I have an idea for a future game with Bryn now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like puts you into the car. Perfect. And you close the door and like Bryn's like puts her head in and it says, just make it out to an adoring fan. Absolutely. And Sash's phone goes off again, and then just like a face happens. Like, 
Yeah, like Big Rattle. Okay. Cool. I think that's the game. All right. Does Bryn get her autograph or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was. She like... just like close the window and drive away. Like screw you. No, no, no. This was a part of the deal. I was signing it on the way. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And I like I don't the know, idea. I don't feel like it's like an autograph book. I feel like it's some kind of like merchandise you would sell, like some kind of raver like beer or something. I was thinking like a hat for some reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is it like a baseball cap or something else? Because uh, I've seen... Like, what's your style? Yeah, that, that's the question that Is I'm it a asking. mask? Yes. A mask. Yes, it is, but it's like... Okay. It's like full face as opposed to like the regular air mask right, um, cool. yeah but you signed the inside or the outside uh the outside is black so i think i have like this like really cool like neon metallic purple marker and cool. this like um, super swooshy, clean autograph. Super legible. Nice, iconic. perfect. Mm -hmm. And now Bryn can wear that and no one will know who she is. Yes. That's if I girl that has... right here where the <laughs> is where the autograph is. All right, cool. Yep. That was good. I loved that. That was really, really good. That yeah, was really I good. I love that too. Good game. All right. So now we, uh, that now now we have a commercial break, and then when we come back, it says, um, eight years ago, um, Reading University, uh, planet. Uh, 862 anomaly and we zoom in on this planet which is like a tiny red gas planet it's not like a gas giant it's like a small gas planet comparatively and we zoom in further and there's like um, a raging storm but above it there is a, um, a hovering city that is above this storm and as we get in closer and closer uh we are coming into uh the university grounds and that is where we also see uh, uh silver and sash amazing um, Silver's hair is longer, um, but it's still very, very obviously her. Um, they are wearing, um, like traditional fencing garb, except since this is an anime, they're not wearing face masks because we have to know who they are. Um, right. <laughs> I mean, obviously. Uh, and she's squaring off against sash what does sash from eight years ago look like um so the face mask hasn't changed in fact i am wearing a fencing mask <laughs> uh -huh. um because like there's the air mask that's right here and then like a bunch of like different um bars that come up mm -hmm. for protection um i i think my hair is more like i think at this point i was still trying to straighten it mm. before it's the wavy mess that it is now mm-hmm 
Nice. So that hair is kind of like coming out behind me. It looks super young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah. Uh, at this point in our lives, who do you think is better with a sword? Who I think you are. Okay. Okay. Uh, then I begin with a leading question. Mm -hmm. uh, after we um, uh, bow respectively towards each other, um, I simply circle you. We, we circle each other, sword tips touching. What do you say to me as we initiate this dance of swords? I don't know how this is going to go, but I'm, I... It wouldn't it be fun if I won this one. You're going to have to work for it. I know. Oh, I guess also another thing that you notice about Sash is that um, their demeanor is completely different than they are eight years ago. That's in, like almost the most glaring detail. Mm. They're like super mellow at this point in their lives instead of like big speak loudly, take up space. Mm -hmm. No, not right now. Um, so I launch a sustained attack with my weight behind it, slashing in a bunch of different directions to try to get you off balance. Do you give ground readily or grudgingly? Readily. I, I dance back from your, from your push and, and chuckle a little bit. Haven't you learned anything about style? Come on, Sash. It's not all about throwing your weight around. So I have to work for it. Um, and I come back and uh move to uh to make an attack against you i overreach slightly you have an opportunity to take a dirty little cut do you take it absolutely and i say this this last bit it was wild but not without purpose and then i make I like go under your arm and cut backwards. Mm. Um, and then I start to like, I stay there too long. Like, like, I don't know that the fight isn't over yet. Do I draw you out, or do you recognize the ploy and hold steady? I think I definitely hold steady, because I'm a little surprised that you managed to get that cut in. And so, when you, uh, when you falter for a moment, I take the moment to regroup myself. Absolutely. And <clears throat> after I have uh, regrouped, I launch back at you and we lock swords and your mouth is near my ear. What do you say? One to zero still means I win. It's not over yet. Oh, really? I thought it was. Um... And then you thrust perilously close to my face. Do you cut me? Where? Uh, as we our, our swords are locked and you, you say you think it's over, I slide my sword up the length of your sword and just barely, like, touch the edge of your hair and a lock goes flying off. Mm-hmm. 
um, without actually breaking your skin. Mm -hmm. and, and so just uh, you see the hair piece fly away as she uh, and then breaks away that the two of them are further apart. Oh, silver. Hair doesn't count as a point, only torso and head. Uh, right, and like as you say that, I've I've turned around and come back at you, and I touch you, cutting across uh, a, a rib. Uh, do you withdraw and run, or do you rejoin the fight? As I've spun around and caught you from behind. Um, I have to rejoin the fight because now it will just be a tie. Mm. And a tie just means that, oh, I'm making progress, but still not a win. Mm -hmm. So I have to, like, regain the one-point advantage. Um, are we past the statute of limitations where I can ask? Yes, we are. Question? Cool. Far past it. Um, <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> I seize momentum and initiative and drive you backward. If you stand, throw. On heads, you hold me back. On tails, I cut you through, um, winning the match. Do you stand or do you allow yourself to be driven? I will stand. I think... Um... Cool. I think she's. I think she's got the, the, the. I think she's got a bad case of the prides. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now, now it's personal. All right, let me flip back over here. Let's try it. Random side. There we go. Ooh. -hoo. All I'm right. Heads, you hold me back. Yeah, you come at me again. Just pushing as hard as you can and I manage to block you blow for blow and I don't I don't move backwards but uh, the as you uh, as you continue to pound on me and I don't move backwards this time finally you get in a good hit and you knock my sword rattling out of my hands do you allow me to recover it or must I submit I think the bells for the next class ring <laughs> and i say i really wanted to win that one but it's a draw silver but that's that's different than a loss for me and then i offer you a hand and pull you back up mm -hmm. well you are getting better sash i'll give you that <sighs> Let's get to the next class. Oof. And then head out. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. Very nice. That's great. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that was very stressful. Let's all cool down with um, <laughs> some cold coffee at that one cafe that we were at after Ray's charity concert um the one that Bryn works at oh, okay yeah the, like that cafe food court thing okay um, i don't know why anybody would go there it's like literally a place it's like literally a food line for workers like okay enjoy your um uh, sloppy joe but that's all you're the, getting it, what have i been saying that sash wants more than anything else right now all <laughs> right which is not written into the situation in seclusion. <laughs> <laughs> so are you there when everyone's eating or after hours? Ooh, I think after hours. Because we gotta... Okay. We... There has been some alcohol snuck in in this, like, etched <laughs> bench flask. Nice. And we're filling... Um, the glasses where you can get your own water with whiskey instead. 
Um, and we're also having did you break in? in? I did. <laughs> but and who who is there? Um, I think everyone can be there if they want. Who are you specifically <laughs> inviting? Yeah. Bryn, of course, okay. because okay, okay. And is I... this a conversation over food? Is that the yep game? Okay. <laughs> Um, so the, that's what you noticed about me. What do I notice about you, Bryn, after your work? Mm. Yeah, notice she was... She was dragging something with her down the hallway. That's why she was up in the middle of the night. She left it in the hallway, in like a corner in the dark. And then she came in like, she caught you. And started questioning you so that, you know, she had control of the situation. And you didn't go snooping. Mm -hmm. I also definitely want to be there. <laughs> Amazing. I think I, I saw like your car pull up or something mm -hmm. and then you get out and break into this place and I'm just like what the heck are they doing and so I just kind of went and followed you <laughs> I think Silver is definitely not there so <laughs> I feel like that makes sense <laughs> cool so okay. who has the lowest social standing here Please. well I kind of work I was gonna say that's kind of a complicated question because like Brynn is a complicated character. Am I in charge of the situation? Do you feel or... in charge? <laughs> I mean, kind uh... of, considering you're sort of supposed to be there and they're sort of not. Yeah. yeah. All right. I guess I'm in charge. Well, then who has the lowest standing, though? Yeah. I mean, technically, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm just poking my head in a window for right now. <laughs> Maybe it's Sash, then? So yeah. Sash is like... Yeah, Sash is the one who did something wrong. I'm just kind gonna, of a bystander. Go to jail for a breaking <laughs> entry. I'm sure that won't make the papers. Yeah. You somehow managed to take this out of the context of, like, broad social standing and now Sash is on the bottom. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Very good. Um, <laughs> so I go first. On my turn, I have to choose one or more of my conversational partners and I have to choose a thing to do. Let's go at the top of the list. Let's ask a topical question. That sounds like fun. Mm. Um, Ray, I need you to reassure me that um, uh, the prices of Banterfell are rising because I don't have my phone with me. Can I? Um, oh, wait, I did, I did have it backwards. I'm still in the dual mindset where I'm asking you to do things for me. Um, let's, let's switch around who's doing that. I hope to convince you that the price of Banterfell is rising because I have my phone with me and I'm showing you on my phone. Can I? Oh, I see. I see. Um, hmm. It's not rising, no. You can't convince <laughs> me the numbers don't lie. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, who goes next? I think Bren uh, lets loose that she actually knows a lot more about the, uh, the stock prices. Uh, she says, uh, well, that's that's just class A stock. What about class B and F? Like, yeah, the land shares are going down, but you know, the shares in Bantrafil and in and electricity, those are going up. Show me where you're getting this from. And I pass well, you my phone. Ray also looks surprised. Points yeah. at <laughs> like she points at a TV. Like that's that's where, and she like 
Phyllis with the, the phone, obviously, uh, she pretends not to know. May is what you pick up, up, up on. Like, she's, she's like, just claims not to know how to look up share prices on a phone. Mm-hmm. When it's, like, probably the easiest thing to do on Bandra. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably like your homepage. And she's like, oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Something gives you away to me. What is it? Uh, uh, not Sash, uh, Bryn. Mm, like, oh. In what way do I give myself away? That is up to because you. Because there are so <laughs> many ways. Pick a way and pick a thing. Uh, <laughs> you see a robot hand in the corridor. Oh. It's just like, you know, imagine there's a door, right? And the okay. robot hand is like laying on the ground. All right. That's what she was up to. So maybe you notice my eyes turn to the corridor. I don't know if you look also, but you can kind of see. I yeah. Know, I notice something, but I don't say anything and I don't bring attention it's to like, it. And like looks at where you look and then looks back at you in the eyes. Yeah, I look at you too. And I think there's like just a little quirk of the eyebrow, like what's that all about? But I don't say anything. Mm. <laughs> But I see you. <laughs> Gosh, this whiskey tastes like motor oil. Why did I? Is this? <laughs> <laughs> can can a flask rust? <laughs> That's me passing to say something about the food. We're in its ear. Okay. Um. Hmm. So it's like, listen, you two have to go. Like security is going to be here. There, there's totally security. You need to leave. I hope to get you to commit to leave. Can I? And I guess I'm asking Sash. Oh, that's a hard question. I love that it's a hard question. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. I'm so glad I'm here. <laughs> I, I, well, so what happens is we just move tables. Oh, yeah, I think it, what happens is that instead of convincing Sash to leave, Ray ends up climbing in through the window, and then we move tables. <laughs> I was like, no, this is the worst. <laughs> um, and I think, like, I don't know, maybe we're sharing this motor oil whiskey or whatever, and um, I say something really... Um, like low-key offensive about the nobility do you let me recover gracefully or do you hold it against me like i say it really casually like i'm not trying to intentionally offend you it's just like i wasn't even thinking that it would be something offensive but do you still hold Mm -hmm. it against me so it might help if we define the offense a little better so Uh. i think the offense (laughs) is that um so like all of the noble names either like in English mean like they're all like nouns of things. Yeah. And a mistake that people often make is they end up theming people based on the names of their houses. So um uh like Sash's house name, for example, is Marinasa. So like the stereotype is that like underwater and then like sash actually lives in sky post so it's a whole thing and um i i let you recover gracefully but i call you out on um 
on stereotyping uh, the band trace by their house names. And like, I apologize and say like, I didn't mean to. It's fine. Like, yeah, we have a moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Whose turn is it? Lavender. It's my turn, yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I, in turn, make my own ignorant social or diplomatic blender. Um, I... I'm like, we've moved to a booth, so we're right next to a window looking up at the stars. Um, and while I'm caught mesmerized by the, the nebula that kind of comes out sometimes, um, this is like maybe a monthly event. So I just, I'm just looking up and I say, I wonder what things are like, what things are happening that we don't know about off-world. And off-world isn't the correct word to use because like there's this whole, it's like stolen rhetoric by like revolutionaries and bad trash nobles to call landowners off-worlders. <gasps> oh, so it's almost like saying, I wonder what's happening with the landowners or something. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you're not supposed to say off-world, you're supposed to say like elsewhere in the cosmos or like use all of these other substitution words. Okay. I guess um, you're pointing at me or towards- Yeah, that's at you, because you're- um, Question is, has Bren been on Bancho long enough that she would catch on to that? Or is it like a universal thing? Um, I don't think it's universal. But I think it's in more places than just Bantral. Hmm. I think it doesn't, like, Bryn doesn't notice it, which probably limits greatly the places she could come from. Like, probably, like, the original colonies and Earth, like, they don't consider that bad because it was a whole part of the culture to expand to the universe. Mm -hmm. So you just deadpan it, and I'll just recover on my own and be like, Yeah. Oh, I should have said. And then I look at Ray and I say, I go on my own. Um, and I don't really correct myself. I just kind of keep looking outside the window. I think I just kind of shrug and say, it's not like anybody's perfect. Well, if you're not going to leave, I might as well get you something to eat. Well, Bryn goes to the cafeteria and warms up some canned ravioli yes. for the two of you. And she comes back puts it on the table. I'm feeling exp exp expansive. What do you want to know about me? Who? Uh, I guess Sash? Wait, is that the right one? You guys in your names. I'm Sash. Yes. Sash. Because Bryn... Well, actually... She she knows uh she knows Ray too, doesn't she? Yeah, you kind of know both of us. This is not the first time we've been in your cafeteria together. <laughs> <laughs> I have an idea for what I want to know. Um, it's a devilish question. Well, okay, I will ask you both. But for first, I'm going to ask Sash. Okay, awesome. Um, you've heard both of our music. Which one do you like better? Oh. <laughs> oh, man. That is... No, that's what I want to know now, too. <laughs> 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 
Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so Sash was like loud. I'm saying, what was what was Ray's music like again? Uh, Ray's like a rock star. Rock star, damn. Um, kind of like rock slash like glam punk esque. I don't think Bren likes Ray for her music, so we're going to say Sash. I am so hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I just start pushing the ravioli around on my plate. <laughs> clearly annoyed <laughs> but you're really pretty <laughs> and, and uh you, you really play that guitar All right. <laughs> i think I, I i shove the ravioli towards you um i hope to convince you that you should eat this instead of me because <laughs> i'm not hungry anymore <laughs> But I'm also trying to get you to join us, even though I'm still kind of pissed off that you don't like my music. <laughs> okay. Sorry, can I convince you? <laughs> mm, like, this is... Like, I'm being really Sundare right now. <laughs> I think you do, but it ends up sounding to yourself like you're sounding like one of the nobles just ordering me around. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to engage in an actual improvised conversation with Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Ray wins. I've been getting calls about it all week, but I've been uh, I've actually been ignoring them. When's our next concert together? You've been ignoring calls about me. Okay, so first uh -huh. the girl says she hates my music. You won't pick up my agent's calls. Ugh. I'll pick up your calls. It's in two weeks. Well, that's longer away than I thought it would be. So... Well, you know, I've got that charity thing on Friday, and then there's the talk show on Tuesday, the guest spot on Wednesday. It's just, they had to push it back a little. That's why you've been getting all the calls, I assume. It just wasn't another time. No, that's perfect for me. Um, I can't wait for it because I love your music. I sit up a little straighter. <laughs> <laughs> I am very shallow and like it when people compliment my music. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you paint genre in your music. Well, I always enjoy you emceeing the event. You do do a pretty good job. So are you two like a thing? <laughs> I love the awkward pause. I think that that's kind of the thing is that like we don't talk about it. Um, if anything has happened, we don't talk about it, and it's like nothing official, probably. Yeah. So Sash jumps in and then says, uh, "One of my jobs is to MC for uh, race concerts." And they do a very good job at it, I should say. That's really cool. So you have your own thing, but then you kind of work together. We're both a little all over the place. <laughs> That's saying something. It's nice to have a moment to get away from everything. Yeah. Tomorrow I have um, a mobile frame sporting event that I'm announcing for. And that's going to be six hours of my tomorrow. What are you doing, Bryn? I'm going to be 
in the trash compactor, making sure it doesn't jam. That sounds like bliss to me right now. For 10 hours. I get three breaks. I think that's the law. I take that. Not forever, but especially for tomorrow. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Sports aren't really my thing. I like announcing, but it's it's a lot of research to put in to a sport I don't really find all that interesting. Ben just looks at you like you're the weirdest person on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I think it's your turn, Bryn, because that was my turn taking an improvised conversation. Wow. All right, so I guess it's only fair. What does uh, Ray want to know about Bryn? Like, she hasn't gotten to talk for a long time, I feel like. Uh, Ray's a guy, just so you know. Well, uh, mm -hmm. he, he better. You're right. I'm, I'm bad with the pronouns. That's okay. Everyone is. That's why I'm reiterating them, just so yeah. you know. Yes. Um, let's see. Because what I really wanted to know was whose music you like better. <laughs> and, um, you, you, Sash. And, uh, so, let's see. What do I want to know now? Um, what could I get you to do to like my music better? <laughs> Jeez. If it's even possible. And if it's not possible, that's fine too. But I'm really, I'm really kind of stuck on that now. It's a thorn in my side. <laughs> I know, I think Bryn would like to hear like a song that, uh, her family used to use in his advertisements but like she can't think of a way to say it like what the... it's, it's just like you know it's like that that song like my family had a song where we replaced the lyrics of the song with like our family name and <laughs> like our vacation adventures Oh, that's adorable. It's, it's a really good song. <laughs> um, but Prince, like, <sighs> hmm, I guess I have to do it, though. So... You don't have to. I mean, you just the question is, what do you want to know about me? That's what I wanted to know. There may not be an answer that you're willing yeah. to Yeah, I think that's totally fair. But I think, like, uh, you definitely know it's like she's, she knows for sure, but she can't ask for it. Okay, that's fair. It's very obvious. Okay. Hmm. Let me look at the questions. Um, so you got any of that whiskey left? That's me passing and talking about the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's still a lot in here. It's not like a small flask either. It's like a. Like, yeah, like a big old. And it's yeah. kind of. Because there's got to be room for the etching of the Skyfos landscape on it. Absolutely. So it's it's pretty big. Is it like an underwater landscape where the sky is like water or mm -hmm. cool? And there's like sun emanations like coming out the bottom as like rays of light. Yeah. Um, give, give it a little shake and then. <laughs> yeah. Um. So there now there's a pausing conversation and I start playing on my phone and I bring up 
oh, this is another thing that I did. Um, and I show you um, the the recording of me at my parents' like church organization thing. Um, sometimes I do guest speaking for religious events too. This is one of my more rare things, but it's something I'm kind of interested in. And like, um, Sash is being very meek about like being religious and stuff like that because it's just like it's a little vulnerable and like can ruffle feathers sometimes. Um, but that's actually not the important part. The important part is that in the background, there's this like disproportionately expensive plasma projector that <laughs> Sash is controlling with um, like you can pick up on cues that Sash is controlling like the shapes in the plasma projector with their hands. So when they do like this finger steepling religious gesture, it like plays this like trance emanation of like fractal noise and stuff. And then nice. when they switch to like having their hands open, it starts to like reveal the bulletin for who's going to be speaking next week because this is the gesture for I'm about to close my speech. So I accidentally spilled the secret that my mech has freestyle plasma projectors. <laughs> <laughs> I cover it gracefully, but you pick up on it anyway. Who picks up on it, or do both of us pick up on it? Ooh. I want to say both, because okay. I'm showing it to both of you. I think Ben's like, is it you with all that noise? You're going to wake up everybody. I pick up on it. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I don't comment on it because, again, I'm, I'm learning all these kinds of secrets and I'm just kind of tucking them away. But I, yeah. I don't <laughs> Cool. Bryn, it's your turn. Um, Ray, I need you to reassure me that I'm not being ungrateful for uh, getting, giving me out of jail. Can you do that? Um, yeah, because I don't think that you, I feel like you owe me anything. Like, to me, it's cool. not a big deal, right? Because, like, you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't deserve to go to jail anyway. Sweet. All right, yeah. so Bryn feels so, better about that. Yeah, I think, like, maybe you bring it up. Like, been, like... <laughs> like, you've been worrying about this for a long time. You're like, hey, by the way, I never thanked you properly. And Ray's just like, Plus, through this whole conversation, she's like, keep <laughs> shutting you down. Like, no, you, your music's not the best. No, you can't become the best. No. <laughs> and, I don't like but, you the best. <laughs> You're like, but at the end of the day, that doesn't matter because what matters is that you didn't deserve to go to jail. And, like, even though Ray's music is super important to him, I think we get a moment of vulnerability here in that. Um, I think he starts to say something really kind of quietly passionate about how important uh, the people, how important Bantrill is to him and how important, not just his fans are, even though he loves his fans, but like just the people in general, they've been given like a really rough hand, especially since uh, the landowners came in and started, uh, you know, like really putting their boot down on things and um it's just really important for him to make sure that that Bantrill is still a good place for good people where good people can like like make a life for themselves and I think we just get this moment of like just like he's very much a showman he's very much like almost always on or like has that like um artistic ooh, thing going on thing or whatever but we get a moment of like actual honest um feeling from him uh 
but I still really hope you don't bring up that one time that we were at that party and I got wasted and I like made out with the ice sculpture uh sash do you (laughs) (laughs) um so that's like I my phone's still on like the closing screen and all of the like droning pad music that's on my phone just like "Ah," and then like i consider my phone to be off but then it auto plays to the video that i took of you making it out of the ice sculpture and then i just i can't believe you kept that video i I try to grab your phone (laughs) how could i not keep it (laughs) how many likes does this video have it doesn't have any. It's in just in my gallery. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, we don't live in the cloud nightmare world yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, I can't believe that played. And then I, I'm like, I actually like hop out the window that Ray hopped in from. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can get away that easily. And I'm chasing you. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, guess I got Oh, but I think I, I've like, left like, like, I don't know. What, I think we use the coins that we are playing with. So I think um, I like grab into my pocket and I put like a handful of coins on the table. I give Bryn a wink and then I cr- chase after Sash out the window. <laughs> like, what are these coins worth to uh, someone in Bryn's position? Um... Hmm, that is a good question. I don't think it's like life changing or anything. It's probably more than uh, you make in a day, though. Oh, it's like each coin or the total amount? Like the whole total is probably more than your day's wages. Okay, cool. Take a day off. <laughs> well, it was more just like, this is for your trouble. I know we've been like terrible taking up your time and breaking into your business. Thanks for not calling the cops. And also you made us ravioli that I didn't eat because I was being (laughs) but here's some money. (laughs) All right, sweet. Sash ate their ravioli though. I was going to and then my music (laughs) got insulted and I wasn't hungry anymore. I know. (laughs) Cool. All right, Danny, it's your turn for the game. Oh gosh. I am torn between two games. And I'm torn between stealing time together because we've set something up and that's always fun. But I also kind of want to just change gears and do like a free for all. So let's do a free for all. We can do stealing time together next time. All right. Everybody's there. Um, I don't even think I declare a partner, but let me double check the setup. Yeah, everyone plays. Everyone's characters meet in your mobile frames to do battle. I do choose a partner, though, so let's choose Silver, because we've not seen you in a while. Hello, Silver. Hello. Where is this free-for-all taking place? Oh, no. What if this is the um, mobile frame rally that Sash is emceeing for? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. And what I was supposed to not say is that I'm manipulating, is that I'm broadcasting for the event from inside one of the mobile frames right right exactly (laughs) like that's that's a secret yeah (laughs) (laughs) nice nice um so what do we notice about each other what have you heard so uh this definitely is like we, we we see the like uh face of of sash like introducing the event like on a tv screen before we zoom in to actually the event and it's of course like sponsored by peak zenith uh (laughs) and uh yeah so i think that uh, representing peak zenith is um uh oh gosh i should probably name her mobile frame i don't think i have um 
but we we see it again and it is like a a, a squid a silver squid a kind of uh vaguely like the the ships from the matrix um you know what i'm talking about yeah i know exactly mm-hmm. what you're talking about right um and so this is a a uh this is an underwater event because of course it is yeah and so we get to see the last time we saw this mech it was on land and it was kind of flopping about and had tentacles everywhere and it was not graceful at all um but this time we see it and it is it's hovering in the water and it looks like an actual graceful squid um larger than life and ready to to tear it up <laughs> um so good what do we what um, do we notice about ray so with ray um the only person who's present who's seen his mech before is bryn but i think his mech is in disguise Mm. he doesn't want any like he has to separate like he's not supposed to be in the event for one he's there for nefarious purposes but also he doesn't want anyone recognizing his mech so like i think he's got like some sort of thing on it that he can install like he installed and it like it's not like a transformer but it does kind of like it can configure into different shapes and also like the plating probably has something in it that allows it to like change color so instead of being a silver dragon it's like a black um shark um with with tinted windows and stuff so like um no one can see in totally incognito definitely not a rebel don't worry about it (laughs) <laughs> yeah i don't think Britain would be invited either um so i think that you can like you can see her mech like standing on top of underwater ridge ready to jump down to fight as soon as this dragon thing gets involved um but Brynn herself is like standing in the crowd um like there's this rope I think that you know the first protective rope before there's the mosh pit, and she's just standing there in front of the stage behind the mosh pit, uh, holding her amulet and getting ready to uh, engage in this fight, and probably. Uh, at least Sash would know she's in the crowd. Yeah. Um, Sash. So I, the reason I actually think we've never seen Sash's mech before is because they've been working on it with engineers for years, maybe. And this is actually its um, its first battle. Um. But what you notice about Sash is um, they're on the big screens that are floating around in this, like, um, since we're in 3D space, like, you can't just have this be, like, a Coliseum because a Coliseum is made for 2D space. Because a Coliseum is, like, a ring around where all of the action happens. But because we're in 3D space, you need to have rings that go in multiple directions. So it kind of looks like that thing from Contact where um, the thing that does the space travel where there's like multiple rings rotating around and then that's how the space is defined. Um, And then there's just like box seating all counter rotating inside that like mounted on the rings. Um, and also mounted on the rings are screens with Sasha's face all over them and, like, trying to broadcast the event. Uh, you notice that the background is obviously fake 
because it's like it's in it's a jpeg of the peak zenith logo behind it and that's not a natural background so uh sash has obviously been green screened in muted i love the idea that you have a green screen in your in your mech yeah <laughs> nice too. that is that feels very sash to me yeah it does yeah. Like mm -hmm. Sash Secret Streamer. Love it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we each get two fir turns. I get to go first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So this is more like a rally, like a monster truck rally and not like a race type thing, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's definitely a battle mm -hmm. uh, where we're all trying to destroy each other. I mean, not really destroy, but, you know, like... Put out a commission. Yeah, decommission each other. There we go, that's better. Win in the pro wrestling sense. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. I should have been looking at questions while people were describing stuff. Okay. Um. Well, since Silver, you are my chosen partner, mm -hmm. I will pick you as my first target. Um, All right. I think we're like on complete opposite sides of the ring and I don't know what it is about you. Maybe I've seen your mech in battle before and I recognize you as a landowner and I've got a score to settle. So I zero in on you right away. <laughs> I mean, this mech has a peak Zenith logo right on it. There's no way you can not be a, a landowner's mech. Sure. So um, I think um, my ch there's part of the uh, shark's chest cavity that opens up and reveals like i want to say like two rows of like four like torpedoes each mm -hmm. and like the top row fires first and then the bottom row fires and i rain a barrage of rockets down on you from out of nowhere can you escape them and how um yeah because i think you are not uh used to fighting in the 3d space um, or, or maybe if you are, uh, not you're not used to, used to yeah, no, yeah, I'm not there used to my, my, my shark form. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I think you have, uh, um, uh, miscalculated how quickly these are going to travel underwater. And so, um, and also it's a squid mech. And so what you see is the uh this barrage of 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 rockets just come right at it and then there is a, a like an explosion but it's of like darkness instead of uh of instead of light and as it clears out you see that the the rockets have actually continued past where the squid was and now the squid has um uh, just, it moved up in the 3D space. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just turn that right around and target back to you. And from across the landscape, I raise my... Um, it. The, the rifle is actually one of the squid's uh, tentacles, um, which are... Uh, sorry, one of its arms, which are different than its tentacles, because squids are weird and they have ten appendages. Um, and it's uh, it comes out in front of the squid, and uh, uh, I can put a shot in your reactor core, slice off your comms antenna, unhinge your knee, or put out an eye. How do you avoid my shot? So I think this is um, a shot aimed for the... Uh, rocket, like, uh, what's the word? Magazine, you know, that's that's in your chest that you just fired out of. Mm -hmm. It's coming right back for it, just gonna go right up the barrel. If uh, can you avoid it? Um, I think I can. How? Um, so my mech can transform, mm -hmm. and so you see the shark basically grow an arm. <laughs> out yeah. of nowhere okay. and I think everyone's kind of surprised because I think transforming mechs are not really a thing totally 
this is kind of like a new thing. So it like grow, grows like it's not really an arm. It's more of like a like a, a claw, mm -hmm. a four claw of maybe like a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> right. And um, I think um, as this tentacle is going for it, um, I managed to make the mech reach out and grab the tentacle out of the water and then crush it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Awesome. Sash, why don't you ask the next challenge? Okay, cool. Yeah, I can do that. Um, while you two are locked in combat, uh, Sash and Mike has just like disappeared from the main focus of combat and returns when um, Bryn's knight mobile frame is stabbed in the back with um, this like what do you call those things on the sun that they're like rings of plasma and stuff like that um, sunspots? solar flare? yeah the flare Solar flare is pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, um, so there's like this blue solar flare, and this is just like beautiful how it's happening. Um, Sasha's mobile frame doesn't even like look to have like any weapons. Like there's no plasma cutters or anything. So it's just like pretty like. A graphic designer designed these like rays of light that are just like expanding and like Jacob's laddering through your mech and through to the other side, just like slicing through the cockpit. Can your frame take it and how? I don't think it can take it. I think like this this is a surprise attack out of nowhere. I think it slices through the cockpit. Uh, you see that it's empty, and the frame like kind of just slumps on the ground, twitching. Um, the pieces you cut off seem to like melt into thin air, and uh, or thin water. Yeah. <laughs> There's some cavitation pops as they disappear. And mm -hmm. then I think your mech and everyone else's mech gets that uh, unidentified warp gate detected. Warp signature. Unidentified mm. warp signature detected. That gives me flashbacks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So is that you out of the free for all then? Um Cuz it would be your turn next, but, but I think I'm going to say like uh Sash how you can take advantage of this. Um do you do so or do you just count this as one down and go on to the next one. I count this as one down, but then I I start trying to like rip off metal from your mech so that because Sasha's mech is not big at all. It's like maybe it's relatively tiny. It's like twelve feet tall. Oh wow, mm. that's compared pretty small. To like these dragons yeah. and stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to disappear from the combat again by hiding inside the shreds of your mech. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sure, that's cool. Like maybe I hide inside of your thigh. <laughs> yeah, like you ripped a leg off and you hide inside of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I warn you, if you do that too long, you're going to get warp gated somewhere interesting I'll just have to be surprised by that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so I'm not out yet next turn that leg's gonna warp gate you somewhere if you're still inside it cool okay um 
All right, so back to me. Mm -hmm. yep. Let's see. Um. I color shift again. That's how I keep to cover. And I'm circling you now with tactical precision. You can barely make out me against this, the color of the water. I'm almost impossible to spot. Do you see me coming? How? Um. No, I don't think I do. I think I'm I'm busy. Uh, like I I'm we we cut to me inside of my cockpit, and I've got like five windows open, and I'm trying to initiate <laughs> a trace on this unidentified warp signature. I have totally forgotten what I was doing in the battle. Okay, cool. So even even if you, uh, yeah, even if I could have spotted you, I I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you you managed to uh come in and get a couple of good hits on me um that snaps me back into uh the moment and suddenly there are uh eight tentacles wrapped around your shark thing <laughs> uh i'm on your back uh, uh, can you shake me? I'm literally on your back. My you are literally on my back, yeah, mm -hmm. with tentacles. Um, I think the only way that I'm able to shake you is by getting rid of my shark form entirely. Mm -hmm. And so we get a moment of, like, the shark getting wrapped by tentacles, and then we hear, like, the servos firing, and maybe, like, the sort of bubbly hiss of like steam coming out into the water as like limbs and wings unfold from this thing and you are forced to let go otherwise you might lose a couple of tentacles mm -hmm. just from the force of these servos or whatever and that kind of forces you off i'm still like very incognito i i've not revealed the the bright silver of my dragon mm -hmm. but it's like oh shit that's not a shark that's a dragon what nice so um as there's this scuffle happening the thigh is like drifting through the water and <laughs> thash is just waiting inside of it to get the right aim and um while that's happening they use that time to like charge like so you know how like symmetra had I don't know if she still has it, but she had like these like charge plasma things mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. weren't super slow but did a lot of damage. And like everybody avoided them every single time, so you had to like lock people down. The um, neutral B. Yep. <laughs> That's what Sash is doing. Um so I'm I guess this is almost like the rifle one. Um Far across the landscape, I'm charging this plasma shot. I can put a shot in your reactor core, slice off your comms antenna, unhinge your knee, put out your eye. Do you avoid my shot? How? Whom? Uh, I am targeting the dragon that's slowly Boo. evolving. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it depends on what you're aiming for. What are you aiming for? Oh, that's a choice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I... I'm going to, like, slice up the dragon's head, of course. Um, I think the only reason I'm able to avoid your shot is that I'm in this tangle with this squid, and so I'm having to do massively evasive maneuvers just to try to avoid getting locked down by this squid. Mm -hmm. So... Maybe if I hadn't been so focused, like, maybe if I had been more, I don't want to say a stationary target, but, like, if my movements had been more predictable, 
he would have been able to figure out where my head was going to be and then man that would not be attached to my mech anymore mm -hmm. but because i'm kind of having to change how i fight because i'm fighting the squid i think mm -hmm. it's just like it's a very narrow miss because like you expected me to go up but then um silver's mech went up and so i went down and yeah yeah so it's just miscalculation yeah, and the plasma ball just zooms past, just like creating a huge air bubble behind it because of how unimaginably hot this thing is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Bryn, work me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the leg's gonna warp. You can either get out of the leg in time or get warped away. Which do you choose? I, of course, get warped because okay, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to broadcast this over the screens and then suddenly... There's no broadcast on the Yeah, it's only cuts nope. it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you find yourself in a mech bay with several other mechs. And we'll continue that later, I guess. Cool. Nice. Nice. Can this dragon get out of this tank? <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, I gotta... I gotta choose an end for the battle. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna go with um, the fight's explosive. We do an enormous amount of damage to the landscape and to the uh, the mech fighting mega dome. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, when the fight ends, Silver and Ray are uh, still standing. Um, it says allied characters. We're not really allied, though. I mean, kind of. we're not re we're not really not allied. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with that though. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sort out your relationship status later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else is lucky to have survived it all, or will they? <laughs> see, uh, Ren gets knocked unconscious before she can teleport away. Yeah. Okay, sure. As so, part of the yeah, part of the thing where it hits like the yeah. crowd and stuff. Oh yeah. no. Yeah. Uh Sash, you're gonna be alone in my warp bay. I don't know how we're gonna play it out, but Or maybe like that'll be a thing we we don't see. Like maybe it's just the thing that like it ends on there and then next episode we're somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. We'll find yeah. out. Next or we'll time. badly mutilate another game. <laughs> I love badly mutilating games. What are you talking about? Uh, thinking about next time, we're going to go around and ask some questions that we would like to know about our characters and maybe explore next time. Uh, so, um, I mean, I, for one, want to know more about... I, I think this is a perfect opportunity to find out more about Bryn and what is she doing here. Um like what is this secret warp uh, mech bay with secret warp technology <laughs> you know um i'd like to i'd like to dive into that a little bit we don't have to but i'd like to mm. astani what about you um i want to know more about sash and ray's relationship honestly like what what's mm. going on between them mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, I want to know what the best makeout spot in the mech bay is. The what? <laughs> <laughs> the best mech spot? The best makeout spot in the mech oh. bay. That's a, oh. That's a very oh. important question. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I want to know how long it's going to take Silver to recognize Bryn. Ooh. Interesting. That's such a good question. Mm, mm, okay. Mm, mm, <laughs> mm, mm. Uh, that is a very good I question. I think she would probably, like, she might have visited that academy to visit, like, an older brother or sister. Because okay. she's pretty young. I think she's too young to have been there with you guys. Sure. But you wouldn't have recognized her at all. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think that's going to be interesting to explore for sure. Awesome. 
Well, let's do some shout outs. Thank you everyone for coming out and uh, and, and watching our little show. Um, I'm Kelsa, this is my channel. Uh, I appreciate you being here. You can find me on Twitter at Kelsa, Twitch, and YouTube. If you're at one, you can find me at the other, same thing, slash Kelsa Delphi. Um, I also have a link to that on my Twitter, which makes it easy to find if you've lost me. <laughs> we can go around in the same order and say uh, where people can find you and what you do on the internet. It's Steeny. Hi, I'm Steeny, but I'm not here being Ray or whatever he is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have my own Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash where I do variety gameplay stuff and I also do art. I did all the art for the show, so if you like my art, check that out. I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Um, you can check out my Instagram at astaneyart. Um, that's basically it. Beautiful. I'm Lavender. I'm taking a break from social media until I finish my game. That's reasonable and fair. Yep. I One notable achievement that I made in the process of um, making a game that's very challenging to make um, is I managed to um, 3D model an eye that's like photorealistic. Oh, cool. I'll, I'll share the, the, the MP4 file with this little group. But y'all don't get to see it until the final thing's out. Yeah, but I want to see it. <laughs> it's real good. I'm going to show you. Yay. I'm excited. Me. Yeah, you can't find me this week because my game's on hiatus. Uh, so you can try and meditate to my uh, special dimension in the void. Uh, you just got to concentrate. Um, and there you'll find me. I also made a game, like a mini game, called Super Death that I want to play now. It's like a one page game. So I got to try that out. Cool. 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 Super Death. It's Super the most death. innovative RPG in years. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone, well, thanks again for coming out. I'm going to uh, put on some sweet, sweet music that Drummer Boy was kind enough to uh, make for me as the Love and Banter Phil theme, and he was cool enough to be in the audience today. So uh, thanks so much, Drummer Boy. I really appreciate your, your music. So good night, everybody.